Um, a failure of 5850 is fairly significant, although we've yet to have one that lasted more than, you know, a few minutes. Um, this is a pretty important level to hold uh, as far as ES goes, um, and we just failed it pretty hard. <laughs> um, uh, I guess we'll see if we find support on the longer term trend, uh, but this is our first actual test of that trend. Um, and it just came right here after market close. Um, if we do fail that trend, that opens up a move down to like uh, 58.20 or a retest at 5,800. Um, a retest at 5,800 is where things would actually start to break down. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if we get that. Uh, the last one we got was last Wednesday. Um, and uh, obviously we found a fairly decent amount of support there. <clears throat> but uh, the second test may not may not have a bounce or may not have as significant of a bounce. Um, commodities up, uh, oil uh, overperforming a little bit today. Gold down, uh, gold up, silver down, uh, copper flat. Uh, some of the agricultural commodities are still up on the day. Dixie down, uh, mostly against the euro. Looks like yields of the two and the five moved up. Um, so the yield curves probably steepened a little bit between the two and the 10. Um, those are getting kind of close, um, but not not too much movement in yields today. Not like the last few days. Correlation largely broke down today. Um, there was a couple moments of recovery, but not much. Um, we are we are starting, as, as earnings pass, there's a very good chance that we will see um, dis the dispersion trade break back down again <clears throat> um, as you know, volatility shorting becomes more incentivized on the underlying components of the index. Um, carry leverage uh, still elevated, uh, 8x, 7x, 7x, um, forward yield on vol, still below the Fed funds rate, but 4.4, so not, not negative. Uh, moves continuing up, uh, although we still haven't seen much of a move out of correlation here uh, since bond vol started spiking. Uh, generally, those are you know a little a little more aligned. Um, right now, they're quite divergent um, and have been for the last. A uh, few weeks, well, most of the month of October. Uh, tomorrow's the end of the month. We have the baby collar roll for JPM. It's not as big um, as the quarterly collar, um, but it is it is a decent number of contracts and can drive some volatility. Uh, SKU moving back up. Uh, it probably doesn't really tell us much. It's not a very big move. Um, S&P 42.14% of, of it uh, above its... Mm, 20 day moving average actually um rsp ended up closing a bit down on the day um despite some recovery earlier um as did russell and dow um so you know that breadth that had picked up earlier in the day kind of swept away did end up being a little bit better of a play than uh than going just short the s p um but Short S and P kind of worked out as well. It's just very choppy. Uh, correlation between VIX, cash VIX, not really doing much. Um, I don't think we're seeing any changes there. Maybe down on the daily, we've got a little bit of movement, a yeah, slight decline. So we may be getting maybe getting a little bit of vol shorting here, but not very much. Fed fund futures now pricing in 0.75 cuts. Uh, this on the back of the much stronger than expected private payroll data. Obviously, you know, it came in almost 100,000 over the analysts' estimated range. And so this is, you know, as we trim rate cuts back into June of 2025, you know, the likelihood of the Fed not cutting again this year is increasing, uh, which which will continue to probably drive yields. And yeah, we see, you know, uh, since last night, the 10-2 is now only positive 11.2%. Uh, Sector-wise, I mean, tech services kind of performed okay, but... Uh, Electronic technology fell, finance was kind of flat, um, manufacturing and health tech, consumer services, durables, these all kind of underperforming largely. Uh, it looks like commercial services did okay today, but not not a lot of winners. Um, <clears throat> and the MAG7 kind of split, right, which is why uh, our price, one of the reasons our price action was so contentious. 
Where's that going to put us for tomorrow? Probably in a similar position that we're in today. Unless we lose this support, we're likely to bounce back towards where we closed and chop around there into tomorrow. And then, you know, kind of the same thing as we go into NFP data uh, on Friday. Um, tomorrow, I think, is a little bit lighter on data. So, I mean, if bulls are going to try to regain that 5850 level and stabilize there into nfp that might be the place to do it but german inflation was up quite a bit eu inflation is going to print in the morning eu inflation and german retail sales may drive the dollar down yet again which creates you know a drop in leverage it makes it it makes it harder for them to bring the markets up and then we have pce deflators um and i don't really think those are very significant um they're expected to move higher um obviously along with that would be a move in yields uh, i would pay attention to super core uh, as inflation starts to heat up um, the fed will fall back to looking at that measure of inflation um, and how it affects people and making their rate decisions so if super core uh, moves up year over year that might be moderately significant um, I think we have uh, jobless claims in the AM also, and uh, PCE prices. PC prices might be, PC price index might be kind of important. Uh, core, maybe more so because of the super core. And then um, no one gives a shit about the Fed balance sheet. There's some Chinese and Japanese PMIs. Yeah, and then just non farm on Friday. So. Um, I mean, obviously, if jobless claims are a big surprise, that could create some volatility. Chicago PMI probably won't matter. I don't think it's been expanding for a while. Uh, mortgage rates might a little bit. Those could be somewhat significant, uh, especially if they're significantly higher than they were last week. Challenger job cuts is expected to rise. May it may not. We'll see. <laughs> But after today's ADP data, probably not. Rip Meta, what did they do? Zuck spend a bunch of money on his new goggles. Oof. I mean, you know all of this price action that occurs when EPS comes out is just bullshit, right? <clears throat> For the most part. I mean, unless it's like a big miss in EPS or revenue, all, all, all analysts care about is forward guidance and the big price spikes that happen right after close are largely just market makers hedging expected moves as the f implied volatility shifts around uh whatever that there was just not much of a change we're a little bit lower and lower day over day we've been getting more compounded vol shorting near spot but it's not it's not very significant <clears throat> no more significant than it was like back in mid-september um, and we we popped out of that and rose higher, you know. Again, I mean, like we we, we said this months ago, like the, the volatility regime has just changed, right? Like we're we're probably not going back down to those like twelve, thirteen levels anytime soon. Is everything you said on meta earnings same for Fubo? What like forward guidance being the main thing? I mean, Fubo is not meta, uh, not by a long shot. But yeah, I mean that's I mean that's that's where the, you know, the, your multipliers come from is is the expected earnings, right? If expected earnings rise, then you know people are willing to pay more money per share for those earnings. How's AR doing after hours? They have earnings, and I can't see the chart. I have no idea. Looks like they're up about like two percent. Not a very big move. Although I don't know if their earnings are released yet. Anyway. That's it. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow for another day of trading at 5835. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. See you later.